Hey, my name is Kara. I'm an ultrasound tech, and let's talk today about an amniocentesis, as well as my own personal experience with having an amniocentesis with our second pregnancy. Now, an amniocentesis is a procedure that is done to test the amniotic fluid and the fetal cells that are within the amniotic fluid. Now, this is done for a number of reasons, but the most common being genetic testing. So essentially, we want to go ahead and take fluid out of the uterine cavity, so essentially out from around baby. And by the way, for those of you that don't know, the amniotic fluid is what surrounds the baby, and it also is what protects the baby. So essentially, it is just what the baby is floating around in. And we are wanting to take out some of that fluid so that we can go ahead and sample what is inside of it as in the fetal cells. And from there, we are able to actually tell if there are any sort of genetic abnormalities for sure with baby. We also do an amniocentesis for other reasons, such as if mom has too much fluid, so that's called polyhydramnios, then sometimes an amniocentesis will be done to lessen the amount of fluid. And in more rare cases, sometimes it is also done to check the maturity of baby's lungs if the delivery is going to be before 39 weeks, or it may be checking for other things such as the cause for a infection in pregnancy. But anyways, the most common cause is to check for any sort of genetic disorder with baby. And in my case, along with many other cases of women who get an amniocentesis, it is because a genetic screening test came back as having a higher risk of baby having genetic disorders. In our case, we had a CVS done with the first pregnancy because we had an increased risk. And then we tried to do a CVS, which, by the way, means chorionic villus sampling. It's essentially the same thing, except they are going to go through the cervix to get the amniotic fluid versus with the amniocentesis, you are actually going through the abdomen to get the amniotic fluid. And they're also done at different times. The CVS is done at a little bit earlier on in the pregnancy than with the amnio. But anyways, my own personal experience was that we chose to get it done because we again had an increased risk of baby having a chromosomal abnormality with our second pregnancy, similar to our first pregnancy. And we found this out because we did the nuchal translucency testing that came back as the nuchal thickness was increased on our baby. And my blood work ended up being okay. So essentially with the nuchal, you combine the blood work as well as your nuchal exam results. So the thickness of the back of baby's head, that fluid. And those two, along with your history, are going to give you a risk factor as to whether or not baby has an increased risk for genetic conditions most commonly Down syndrome. But anyways, ours came back higher again, like with our first pregnancy. So we did end up opting to do a CVS initially, like with our first pregnancy, but they ended up not being able to get enough fetal cells. So therefore, by the time that we found that out, it was already too late to do another CVS. So we opted to then do an amnio. An amnio is done between 14 to 20 weeks. And if you do it any earlier than 14 weeks, then the chance of miscarriage does go up greatly. And after 20 weeks, it's just not something that they do. So anyways, we got ours done, I think, at about 15 weeks or so. And it is important to note that this is one of two invasive tests that you can do to determine whether or not baby has a genetic abnormality for sure. The other one being a CVS. The reason why we are not doing these things on a routine normal pregnancy, though, is because the risks do outweigh the benefits in those cases. Essentially, if you have a negative screen for a genetic abnormality and there is nothing wrong with the pregnancy or nothing anyways perceived to be wrong with the pregnancy, then having an amnio or a CVS is not deemed as necessary because with an amnio and a CVS, Both of these procedures are called invasive procedures for a reason. They do have a risk of having a miscarriage of the pregnancy. So I believe now it's definitely less than a 1% chance that you will miscarry after having an amnio or a CVS, but still the risk is definitely there. And also there can be a needle injury due to the needle going in and possibly poking baby. So that's obviously a risk as well. And less commonly, it can also trigger things such as a urine infection, which again does put the pregnancy at risk. So if you do not have any sort of reason to warrant the amniocentesis or the CVS, it is not something that your doctor is going to offer you and is not something that is going to be recommended.
Anyways, back to my own story about having our amniocentesis. thesis. I'll go ahead and I'll walk you guys through what we went through, and I believe it's pretty similar with all amniocentesis. So essentially with an amnio, you are going to get it done at an outpatient center, which means that you are going to go in, get the procedure done, and then you are able to leave right after if there are no sort of complications with the procedure. It's not like a major surgery or anything like that, so it's not going to be like an inpatient kind of thing. So that's why I say it's at an outpatient center. The one that we went to, it was at a high-risk hospital in the province that I'm in. So we went there and we did have an appointment scheduled for that day. Unlike when you get an ultrasound done at these high-risk clinics, for us anyways, they do give you an appointment time for those ultrasounds, but you could be seen basically up to three, four hours afterwards, depending on how busy they are. But luckily with the procedures, they do run pretty on time. So I remember ours was pretty early in the morning and we went in, we got prepped as in all you have to do is basically just get changed into a gown that they provide you. And then you're going to go ahead and lay down on the bed and they are going to take a look at baby and take a look at the environment first with ultrasound. So it'll be just like any other scan that you get initially. And after that, they're going to prep the area on the abdomen where they are going to go in with the needle to get the sample. Now, funny story with the radiologist that did my amniocentesis. I guess the one that was supposed to do it that day called in sick or something of that sort for the day. So they actually ended up getting a rad that was retired out of retirement to come and cover for that day. So this guy was super experienced, quite old but at the same time you know I'm sure he had worked years and years in radiology so I definitely trusted him and I remember asking him if they were going to use any sort of numbing before they go ahead and put the needle in through the abdomen to get the fluid and he told me that apparently patients experience more pain or basically it's just a worse experience if they use numbing beforehand so he's like no we're actually just gonna go and clean the area and then we're just gonna go right in with the needle I remember laying there thinking, okay, great, you had better be right, (laughs) because I was expecting numbing, but okay, great, give her. (laughs) Anyway, so they come in, and they go ahead, and they scan just to make sure that they can find a good spot to go in that is free of any sort of cord and free of any sort of fetal limbs in the way, and then they went and prepped the area. I think they just did a, like, cleaning solution on the abdomen is what I remember. And then they used a sterile drape for the area as well as they have like their sterile equipment on the cart beside them. And then with the ultrasound on the screen, and mind you, I did not watch this part, but I remember my husband did. They went ahead and they inserted the needle into the abdomen while they were watching the needle go in with the ultrasound just to, again, be sure that they were going in to the right spot where the amount of fluid looked safest, as in free of any sort of fetal parts, free of any sort of cord. And then they went and took a sample of the amniotic fluid in that area. After they got the fluid sample, obviously they got it through that syringe and then they pulled the needle out and then it was basically done and over with. They did put, I believe, just like a little bandage across where they went in with the needle, but it was such a small little needle prick that I remember it didn't even bleed very much after and it really didn't cause me a whole lot of pain. I remember it did sting a little bit when the needle went into my abdomen, But that's similar to any sort of blood work that you would get done anyways, except obviously they're drawing blood usually from your arm. So it kind of felt like that. And in my case, I didn't really feel any cramping when the needle went through the uterus and into where the amniotic fluid was. But I have heard from other patients that sometimes you do get a little bit of cramping when the needle goes in through the uterus. Afterwards, um, I did not really feel any pain after I didn't get any sort of cramping and everything went smoothly. So they did end up getting enough amniotic fluid to be able to test the cells of baby. And we did get a call from our genetic counselor about three or four days later, I want to say. And that told us that baby was genetically normal. There was no chromosomal abnormalities that they could see on baby through the DNA. So that was a huge relief for us. And with the amnio that other people may get, it isn't necessarily the genetic counselor that will call you with the results. It may also be your OBGYN. So just be aware of that. 
And unless you have any sort of alarming complications, such as prolonged extreme cramping, if you have like fluid loss, or if you have any sort of bleeding, or if you feel like the fetal movements that you're feeling before the amnio is now either different or you're not feeling any fetal movement at all, you usually don't need to contact your doctor afterwards. But of course, if you're having any of those symptoms after you have an amnio, or if you are even just concerned about the mild symptoms that you are having, definitely talk to your doctor about it. Because luckily in my case, we did not really have any sort of complications that went on. But again, there are risks with the amnio, including miscarriage, as well as an infection. So things such as fever and cramping, just kind of more of those concerning symptoms, definitely should be talked to your doctor about. So hopefully this provided a bit more of a idea of what to expect if you end up needing an amniocentesis. And if you want to know more about the two abnormal nuchal translucencies that I had with both of our pregnancies, I do have a video on that as well. So I'll definitely link it in the description below. But as always, if you guys have found this video helpful, please go ahead and like, comment, or subscribe. And I also make TikTok videos as well. So check me out on there.